Now to some very controversial construction projects in three German cities. In all three cases, historical legacy collides with architectural modernism. Arts 21 asks why they are dogged with such difficulties. It was a major event when the winning entry of the competition to recreate the royal palace in the heart of Berlin was finally revealed by the jury. It's very beautiful, powerful and courageous. It's an extremely well-balanced, good design and it will prove to be very popular. Some of those who want to see the palace, or something like it, rise from the ashes are pleased. The trouble is, many others don't like the idea at all, or don't think the design that won is very good. It's very conservative. The architect doesn't even bother to consider combining the old and new in an intellectually rewarding and imaginative manner. It's very stolid. I don't think it's going to make anybody happy. We don't need a palace. This is a democracy. We've spent the last 50 or 60 years talking about how democracy should affect architecture. Major architectural projects tend to become the focus for desires, hopes and anger. Three such ventures in Germany are causing agitation. The new concert hall going up in the Docklands of Hamburg. The redevelopment of Stuttgart's main railway station, which involves the construction of a whole new complex of buildings on the site. And the Palace of the Hohenzollerns in Berlin. It's where Kaiser Wilhelm II lived until he was chased away in 1918. It was bombed in the Second World War. The communist regime of East Germany pulled down the ruins in 1950 and built a palace of the people instead. Removal of that controversial structure was finally completed last year. That left a big open space, perhaps the most charged void in Germany, full of history and competing interests. Franco Stella from Vicenza in Italy intends to recreate the Baroque facades on three sides of the exterior and the cupola. Much of the rest is austerely formal. Stella has described himself as a classic modern rationalist. His plans do what they're required to do, but some critics consider them timid and unimaginative. The new design is a monument to fearfulness, because it tries to be inoffensive and offers little in the way of new ideas. What it's saying is, we Germans are playing it safe. We're afraid of surprises. Is the nation or its leadership gripped by fearfulness or even anxiety when it has to deal with its history? Stuttgart's railway station dates from 1922 and is a listed building. The redevelopment plan foresees putting the tracks underground and tearing down part of the building, thus freeing up 100 hectares of prime real estate. The face of Stuttgart would be transformed, its downtown area doubled in size. Critics say the whole project is unnecessary and too expensive. Arguments about the project have been dragging on for a decade. There has been a lot of resistance to the massive scale of the redevelopment, the transformation of the city. It's a very emotional conflict, but it's also one of substance, about architecture and urban planning. The problem is neither side wants to budge. Stuttgart 21, as the project is called, would cost 5 billion euros. Is it worth it to polish the city's image? The question is, what will it do for us once it's built? In Germany, we always talk about costs. What we should do is consider the long-term benefits, the advantages once a project is completed. The problem is thinking only in the short term. The third project in trouble is the Elbe Philharmonic Hall in Hamburg. It's set to transform the face and the reputation of the city. A fantastically airy concoction, courtesy of the Swiss duo Jacques Herzog and Pierre de Moron. Hamburg has been indulging in a fantasy of change and renewal, triggered by this project. The auditorium will perch on a 19th century warehouse in the redeveloped Harbour district. But the costs are soaring. 
the completion date has been pushed back several times. So far, only the concrete base can be seen on top of the old structure. It takes vision to see the vision here. And what will go on inside the auditorium when it's completed? Nobody can claim with 100% conviction that we urgently need this new concert hall. Architecture reflects or enhances cultural identity. But one person's identity can be another's charade. Visions can fade when costs soar, buildings prove useless, or facades are just too boring. The wider world is amazed by the Berlin Palace problem. In America, it would be inconceivable for taxpayers' money to be spent on something like a Disneyland castle, reconstructing something that's dead and buried. It would be out of the question. The good thing about disagreements is that they make us think. They remind us that what we build isn't just fate. We create it ourselves.